JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 25th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar tra uh, continued trading higher against most of the other major currencies on Thursday during the Asian Morning Friday, with the main losers being uh, JPY, GBP and uh, CHF in that order. The only currencies against which the greenback did not act out any gains and instead was found virtually unchanged were uh, AUD and, uh, and CAD. Now, although the dollar kept marching north, the fact that the main losers, the main losers were the safe havens yen and franc suggests that the financial world may have turned to a risk-on mode at some point. Indeed, although uh, European shares closed in negative territory due to Russia's invasion in Ukraine intensifying investors' flight to safety, Wall Street rebounded with Nasdaq gaining the most. Appetite stayed relatively supported during the Asian session today as well. Now, for another day, investors' gaze stayed uh, locked on developments surrounding the Russia-Ukraine conflict and what may have prompted uh, them to add uh, back some risk to their, porf to their portfolios may have been the decision of the US and other Western nations to redouble their efforts to crimp Russia's ability to do business with, with sanctions including freezing um, bank assets and cutting off state-owned enterprises. Maybe this sparked some hopes that the conflict could be resolved without any other nation getting involved. US President Biden himself has uh, repeatedly noted that uh, the US would not engage in war with Russia. Yes, NATO members agree that an attack against one of them is considered an attack against all of them, but Ukraine is not an, a NATO member yet, and thus those protections do not apply. Having said all that though, it is too early to assume that the sanctions will force Russia to back down or that any other nation will not get involved. Thus, we prefer to treat yesterday's recovery in risk assets as a corrective rebound, and we see decent, ch decent chances for another leg south. Now, besides equities and other traditional uh, risking currencies, due to, ge due, to the, uh, due to the geographical location of the conflict, we believe that the euro and the pound could suffer additional losses as well. At the same time, safe havens, like the yen and the franc, could come under renewed uh, buying interest. The only major risk in currency which could experience limited losses may be the Canadian dollar and this is because the conflict, the conflict is driving oil prices up due to fears of, uh, of supply disruptions. Let's not forget that Canada is the fifth largest oil producing nation in the, in the whole world while it holds the sixth place among, uh, in terms, let's say, in terms of exports. Now, in terms of monetary policy, some may, f may at first glance, um, uh, some, some people may at first glance think that the conflict could, could translate into less hoggish narrative by major central banks. However, we believe that it may be the opposite. Searching oil prices, uh, searching oil prices to levels last seen in July 2014 could mean higher inflation in the months to come, which may require an even more aggressive tightening. Thus, we stick to our guns that even if the geopolitical tensions is sooner than expected, expectations over faster rate increases around the globe could keep elite on any, on any, excuse me, on any relief bounce. 
we believe that uh, the path of least resistance will stay to the downside even when the Russia-Ukraine conflict ends. Now, as for today's events, for another day, we believe that market attention will stay locked on developments surrounding the Russia-Ukraine conflict. However, there are some data on today's agenda we need to mention, and those are the US durable goods orders for January, the personal income and spending, as well as the core PC index for the same month. We also have two ECB officials speaking today, and those are President Christine Lagarde and Supervisory Board Member Elizabeth McCall. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day and greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.